In this lesson, we'll take a look at how to use the metal ray torus geometry shader. So this torus geometry shader, along with all of the other metal ray geometry shaders, will basically let us render out at render time what any of these primitives. So what we need to do is plug this geometry into some kind of a placeholder object. So this can really be any piece of geometry that we want to use as our placeholder. So in our case, let's try something like a NURBS plane. So this is be a, a very nice low resolution piece of geometry. So within this piece of geometry now, let's take a look inside its attributes, go to its uh, actual shape tab, or its geometry tab, and if you take a look inside the metal ray area, you should see the geometry shader. So now let's enable the geometry shader. Let's plug in the appropriate shader. So we'll scroll down. In our case, we'll use the metal ray torus. There we go. And now, at render time, we get our torus, as opposed to the NURBS plane. So really, this is a way of just being able to swap out, at render time, one piece of geometry for another. Now, unfortunately, since this is just a self-contained node, we really don't have the ability to come in and do standard polygon operations, such as extruding, splitting, um, resizing individual faces. We really don't have that level of control. But we do have, on this geometry shader, the ability to control basic things, like the number of spans horizontally and vertically, as well as the radius and the thickness. So if we were to drop down this radius, you can see how that will overall make this sphere a little bit smaller, or rather the torus a little bit smaller. We can also start to lower this thickness to about half of what it was. You can see how that will increase or decrease the size of the opening that we have. And then finally, we can adjust things like the number of spans vertically and horizontally. So if we were to really bump this up, let's say to 64 spans that run around the length of the torus, and then let's say maybe something like 16 spans that run around the outer area, you can see how we can improve the rendered quality of our torus. Now, if we wanted to actually shade this piece of geometry a different color, that can be easily done by just simply dropping on any of these existing materials and assign it to your geometry the same as you would any other material. And then at render time, this metal ray piece of geometry will inherit whatever shader has been applied to its parent placeholder geometry. And there we go. So that's a look at how we can utilize the metal ray geometry shaders.